From the heart of West Africa arose an empire painted in shades of gold, ruled by a monarch whose riches defied comprehension. Mansa Musa, the 14th century sovereign of the Mali Empire, amassed a fortune so vast that modern economists struggle to quantify it. Riveting stories of gold-laden caravans and architectural marvels merely scratch the surface of his opulence. This video endeavors to unravel the enigma of Mansa Musa, focusing on his unparalleled wealth, the avenues through which he expended it, and the legacy that continues to captivate historians and economists alike. Welcome to the luminous world of the Golden Empire. In the West Africa, where the Mali Empire reigned, the ground concealed veins of incalculable wealth. While the empire was replete with valuable resources like salt and agricultural produce, it was gold that constituted the backbone of Mansa Musa's staggering wealth. The empire's dominion included the bountiful regions of Bambuk and Bur, known for their abundant gold mines. For years, these mines were Mali's best-kept secret, concealed even from neighboring kingdoms. Gold extracted from these mines was traditionally measured in units called mud, and reports suggest that at its peak, the Mali Empire produced upwards of half the world's gold. Beyond its borders, the gold was the linchpin of flourishing trade relationships, particularly with North African states and beyond to the Middle East. The Saharan trade routes were like golden arteries, pulsating with activity and bringing prosperity to the empire. This gold not only established Mansa Musa as the richest man of his era, but also laid the financial groundwork for the Mali Empire's advancements in various fields. It was the golden key that unlocked the empire's potential, setting the stage for Mansa Musa's reign to be more than just a chapter in a history book. While gold shimmered at the forefront of Mansa Musa's wealth, it was far from being the sole asset in the Mali Empire's treasure trove. Salt was another cornerstone, with its significance going beyond mere culinary applications. It was vital for preserving food and for its medicinal properties. The empire's salt mines, mainly concentrated in the northern regions, acted as a counterpart to the southern gold mines, balancing the empire's economic standing. Agriculture served as another pillar supporting the empire's prosperity. Fertile lands along the Niger River cultivated staples such as millet, rice, and sorghum. The river itself teemed with fish, providing a vital source of protein for the populace. These agricultural yields were not merely for sustenance, but also played a role in trade, particularly in exchanges for other goods like textiles and spices. Livestock farming also constituted a notable asset. Herds of cattle, sheep, and goats roamed the grasslands, generating products like milk, meat, and hides. Livestock, especially cattle, often served as indicators of wealth and were integral to the social fabric of the Mali Empire. Trade partnerships further diversified the asset portfolio. With well-established trade networks traversing the Sahara, Mansa Musa gained access to markets where he could exchange gold for commodities that were scarce in his empire, including fine textiles and scholarly manuscripts. The tale of Mansa Musa is incomplete without recounting his legendary pilgrimage to Mecca, a journey that thrust him and his empire into the limelight of global consciousness. Undertaken in 1324, this pilgrimage was unlike any before or since. The caravan that accompanied the king was monumental, consisting of thousands of subjects, guards, heralds, entertainers, camels, and an estimated 15 tons of gold. The procession was so grand that it became folklore, a mythical display of wealth and power. However, the journey wasn't merely an ostentatious display. It had profound political and economic ramifications. The pilgrimage route passed through cities like Cairo, where Mansa Musa distributed gold so liberally that he inadvertently caused a form of inflation known as the Cairo Gold Crash. This economic impact was so significant that it affected Egypt's economy for years. The pilgrimage also served as a diplomatic mission, fostering relationships with other Muslim states and elevating the Mali Empire standing in the Islamic world. Scholars and architects were invited back to Mali, marking the start of a cultural renaissance. Additionally, this epic journey led to Mali and its king being recorded in world maps of the time. 
The Catalan Atlas, for instance, prominently featured Mansa Musa holding a golden nugget. Hence, the pilgrimage of affluence not only demonstrated Mansa Musa's incomparable wealth, but also turned the eyes of the world towards a hitherto overlooked empire, establishing its geopolitical importance and cultural relevance for years to come. Upon his return from Mecca, he was accompanied by Andalusian architect Es-Sahali, who played a pivotal role in shaping the architectural landscape of the Mali Empire. Among the most renowned structures is the Jingereber Mosque in Timbuktu, an edifice of adobe and wooden outgrowths that stands to this day as a symbol of the Mali Empire's grandeur. Musa's architectural ambitions were not confined to religious structures. He commissioned palaces and fortified cities, transforming the empire into a nerve center of Islamic art and architecture. These structures became focal points for cultural exchange, attracting craftsmen and artisans from far and wide. Education was another domain where Musa's riches bore fruit. Timbuktu turned into a beacon for scholars under his patronage. Not just a marketplace for physical goods, the city became a marketplace for ideas, Manuscript libraries were established, and scholars from various parts of the Islamic world flocked to this burgeoning center of learning. Mansa Musa's wealth had a gravitational pull that extended beyond simply Mali. It had an impact on other economies that is still felt today. The most immediate economic impact was seen in the trade routes crossing the Sahara. As gold from Mali started to saturate markets, it became a stabilizing economic force. Cities like Cairo, Mecca, and Medina experienced an influx of Malian gold, facilitating further development and expansion. Additionally, the Mali Empire's control over valuable salt mines had a ripple effect on the surrounding economies. Salt, vital for food preservation and medicinal purposes, was traded across the Sahara, sometimes in a direct exchange for gold. This trade contributed to a network of economic interdependencies among African states and beyond. Further afield, Mansa Musa's wealth and the subsequent tales of his affluence attracted European interest in West Africa. The allure of Malian gold was one among many factors that later spurred exploration and, unfortunately, exploitation of the continent. Thus, the wealth of Mansa Musa acted like a stone cast into the pool of the world's economies, creating ripples that extended far beyond the Mali Empire's borders, leaving both beneficial and challenging imprints on various economies across continents. Musa's unmatched wealth served as the sinew and bone of a solid administrative framework rather than just adding glittering touches to his dominion. One of the most enduring aspects was the reinforcement of centralized governance. With abundant resources at his disposal, Mansa Musa was able to install competent administrators, known as Farines, to manage different regions of the empire. These individuals were often paid handsomely, ensuring their loyalty and dedication to effective governance. Another significant stride was in the realm of justice and law enforcement. Legal institutions became more elaborate, and the establishment of well-resourced courts was a priority. Jurists and scholars versed in Islamic law were appointed, contributing to a fair and consistent legal system. He also invested in military strength, understanding that wealth could attract not just admirers but also adversaries. Armed forces were equipped with advanced weaponry, and fortifications were built to protect economic hotspots like gold mines and trade centers. Furthermore, the wealth allowed for large-scale public works projects aimed at improving infrastructure. Roads were constructed not just to facilitate trade, but to ensure rapid military mobilization. Storage facilities were erected for surplus grain, safeguarding against famine and strengthening food security. Wealth, in Mansa Musa's hands, was not a static treasure but a dynamic force that infiltrated every layer of governance, enabling him to rule with efficacy and vision. The veins of gold running through Mali did not just enrich the treasury. They nourished the pillars of a robust, centralized, and secure administration. During his rule, Mali transformed from a mere repository of gold into a fertile ground for the nurturing of culture and intellect. 
Musa's copious wealth didn't only build structures of brick and mortar. It laid the foundations of an intellectual edifice that would influence West Africa for generations to come. His pilgrimage to Mecca had far-reaching cultural implications. Islamic scholars, poets, and architects returned with him to Mali, adding new layers to the empire's intellectual and artistic landscape. The ruler's capital, Niani and the city of Timbuktu, were transformed into sanctuaries of learning. Islamic jurisprudence, astronomy, mathematics, and history were subjects of intensive study. Libraries filled with manuscripts in these fields became the sanctums for scholars from different corners of the Islamic world. Mansa Musa's generous patronage also fueled the arts. Textile weaving, pottery, and metalwork achieved unprecedented finesse during this time. Oral traditions of storytelling, imbued with lessons in governance and morality, were formalized, passed down from griots, the esteemed storytellers, to younger generations. Through careful allocation of his wealth, Mansa Musa nurtured a cultural milieu that was both eclectic and deeply rooted in the empire's traditions. Thus, the Mali Empire under his rule became a beacon, drawing in thinkers, scholars, and artists, much like a flame draws moths, enriching the empire's cultural legacy in a manner that gold alone could never achieve. The wealthy king's treasure didn't just fill vaults, it crafted a legacy that has defied the sands of time. The architectural marvels he commissioned stand as cultural landmarks, while the intellectual pursuits he funded have had a long-lasting impact on African scholarship. His wealth allowed him to extend Mali's influence globally, affecting economies and geopolitics far beyond his borders. While the gold reserves may have dwindled, the institutions he fortified continue to serve as enduring monuments to his reign. Thus, his legacy is not measured in ounces of gold, but in the far-reaching influence and cultural richness he imparted. If you're fascinated by the golden tales and enduring legacies of historical figures like Mansa Musa, consider subscribing to our channel. If you know of any more historical figures or mythical creatures, let me know in the comment. Have a historic day.